Hi, and welcome to Art with Mrs. Torres. Today's picture is going to be an underwater sea life painting. We are going to be using watercolors and watercolor paper. You're going to need a Sharpie marker and a large paintbrush. This is for painting our background. You're also going to want to get a bowl or a cup of water. And lastly, you might want to look for a sponge. I'm going to be using the sponge to blot the water onto the paper. It's a little faster. Now, if you don't have a sponge, just go ahead and use your large paintbrush. That'll work just as well. So gather those items up and meet me back here. And let's begin. Welcome back. We've got all of our supplies ready, and we are ready to make our pretty silhouette painting of a sea turtle in the ocean. So we're going to be using watercolor paper. We're going to put all of our tools aside. The only thing we're going to need right now is our sponge and our water, our watercolor paint, and a large paintbrush. Now, if you have a big flat paintbrush, you could use that. You could also use a larger brush like this. That will work as well. So find a large brush and a sponge if you have it. You're going to need a little bowl of water and your paint. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my sponge wet. So I'm gonna put my sponge in the water. I'm gonna push it down inside the water. And then I'm gonna flip it over and push it down again. We really want our sponge to be filled with water. And then I'm gonna squeeze it out. So it feels heavy from the water, but it's not dripping all over my paper. I'm gonna take that sponge and I'm going to softly moisten my paper just by kind of tapping it all the way across and get a little bit more water on my sponge. Now, if you don't have a sponge, you can do the same thing by taking your paintbrush and painting water across your paper like this. So if you don't have a sponge, just use a large paintbrush. We just want to cover the entire paper with water. Now, one of the things that happens when you moisten your paper with water is that sometimes your paper will start to curl up. So what I like to do is then take my paper, flip it over. See how it's starting to curl up? And I'm gonna put a little bit of water on the back too. So you can take your paintbrush and do this, or you can just use your sponge. And you don't have to put very much water on the back. You just wanna put a little bit of water across the back. You can see my paper's nice and flat now. Now I'm gonna flip it back over to the front. And I'm gonna add one more coat of water now. There we go. Now I'm done with my sponge. I'm gonna wring it out. I'm just gonna place it off the table. And now I'm gonna use a large paintbrush for painting. So as I mentioned earlier, either paintbrush will work. You wanna keep your water right by you. And the first color that we're gonna get wet in our paint box is blue. So I'm just gonna shake my brush over the blue. The other color we're gonna use a little bit of today is green. And you can even use purple. If your paint box has purple, you can add a little bit of water to the purple. And then our final color, if you would like to, you can add a little bit of water to your black. All right, now the first color that we're gonna be doing in the middle will be blue. So I'm gonna once again, make sure my paper is wet. My paper looks nice and wet. I'm gonna take my brush and tickle the water in the blue. And I'm gonna start right here in the middle. You can see that my paint is already spreading in my water and I'm just going to make a big circle of blue in the middle. I'm going to add a little bit more water. I'm going to swirl it again into a big circle. Now I'm going to put a little bit more blue on my brush and I'm going to make my blue a little bit bigger, my circle. And once I've made my circle nice and big, then I'm going to add a little green. So I like to put a tiny bit of green because if you look in the ocean, your water in the ocean isn't necessarily just blue, right? All different kinds of colors. Now, once we start getting toward the outside edge, I'm gonna add a little water because sometimes my corners get a little dry. just a little bit more. And now I'm gonna to start to put another coat of blue, but this time I want it darker. So I'm gonna put extra blue paint on the sides. So it's a little darker. 
So I'm gonna do one side at a time. I'm gonna paint it right up to the corners. And then I'm gonna paint the other side with blue, right up to the corners. And I'm gonna try not to leave any of my paper showing so that everything is covered. There's no white paper. Now I can leave it just like this. It's really pretty just the way it is. But sometimes when you're in the water, in the ocean, the water looks dark where there's some shadows. So this is where I'm gonna grab some purple. And I'm gonna put a little purple right across the edges. When I'm all done with my purple, you can put as much as you want. Doesn't that look so pretty? My final color is gonna be just a tiny bit of black. So I'm gonna rinse out my brush and I'm not gonna put very much, just a little bit on the corners of my brush. I'm gonna paint a little bit of black right on the edges. Now I don't want it too dark. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more water to it. And I'm gonna brush it right off the edges of the paper. But because my paper is wet, you can see that it's gonna blend really nicely with the other colors. When I'm all finished, if you have any spots that maybe don't have enough color in them, you can go back in. So I can add a little bit more blue if I want to. I like to make a big circle in the middle. I can put a tiny bit more green in there. And when you're all done, we're gonna leave a little spot in the middle a little lighter. So I'm gonna set my brush down. First, gonna rinse it out and set my brush down. Now I'm gonna get a napkin or a paper towel and I'm gonna crumple it up into a ball. And as you can see in this photograph of the turtle, it's light right where the sunlight is shining down from up above the water. It's like if we were holding our breath and we were in the ocean, we were looking up at that sea turtle swimming above us. This is the light that's coming in from the sunlight up above. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of fake that by taking our tissue or our paper towel or even a, a little bit of toilet paper will work. And we're just gonna blot the center. So I'm just gonna kind of crumple it up into a ball and very softly, I'm just gonna start to blot in a little circle, the center. Now I'm not pushing very hard, just taking a little bit of the color away. See how it's pulling up on my napkin? Now, if you would like to, you could continue this all around your picture, just every so often tapping it like this. That's gonna make it look like there's bubbles in the ocean. We're gonna let this dry. So you wanna go put this in a sunny window or if it's sunny where you live, you can take it outside and put it in the sunshine uh, just for a little while till it dries. And then once it's dry, we're gonna come back and we're gonna paint our turtle and our sea plants. We're gonna do coral and sea plants, all kinds of seaweed and things like that. So take this, bring it outside and meet me back here when it's nice and dry. All right, my painting is dry. I'm gonna gather my other items. So I'm gonna need a pointed paintbrush this time, not my big wide flat one, something that's got a little bit of a point on it. I can also use the one that came in my watercolor set. This will work as well. I'm gonna need a Sharpie marker. So I've got that. I'm gonna need a napkin. I have that. A little bowl of water, the same one we used earlier. Um, I just rinsed it out to put a little fresh water in it. And we're gonna be only working with our black paint from here on out, our watercolor paint. Okay, let's begin. So I'm gonna move all my items off to the side. I am a left-hander, so I'm gonna put my tools on my left-hand side, but you can keep your things over here on the right if that's easier for you. We're gonna start with a Sharpie marker and we're gonna look at a photograph of a real turtle swimming in the water. So I want you to look at this picture. So this is if you were under the sea and you were looking up at this turtle, this is what you would see, the sunlight up above, 
you were holding your breath under the water, this would be the silhouette of the turtle. So this is what we're going to be drawing, something kind of like this. So when we're drawing this picture, you'll notice the shape of the turtle's shell kind of looks like a leaf shape, doesn't it? You're making a circle with a little point on the end and then a cute little head on the top. He's got his front flippers for his arms are very long and his back flippers are a little bit shorter. And then you can see his tiny little tail. So let's begin by first taking our marker and we're gonna start by finding the center of our paper and making a little dot. Remember when we make those dots, it helps us to place everything in the right location. Now, once we have made a dot on our paper, we're gonna make a circle around it or an oval, it'll turn into an oval. But for now, just start with a circle. This is how big do you want the shell of your turtle? So we can make a small turtle, a medium, a large, it's really up to you. Now, once you've made the shape of the turtle, the size of the turtle, now we're gonna to start to create more of the shape. So you'll see that the turtle's shell kind of looks like a rainbow and a smile, which forms a leaf shape. If you turned it this way, I covered up the head, that would look like a leaf, right? You see that, the body? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to round this like this, and we're gonna bring it out a little farther. And then we're gonna to go to the other side the same way, round it, and bring it out a little farther. So now it kind of looks like we're making somebody's eye. <laughs> From here, we're gonna connect the end and then you're gonna give your turtle a little tail. So just make a little point on the end. You can fill this in with your Sharpie marker. Next, we're gonna go in and we're gonna create his head. So we're gonna draw a long neck and then a rounded curve for his head. So we're gonna come up here and we're gonna make two lines side by side for his neck. And then we're gonna make kind of a rounded curve for the head. And we're gonna do the same thing on this other side, a rounded curve for the head. And then you can take your Sharpie marker and fill this in also. Now the next place we're gonna to start to draw are the fins, the front flippers. So if you look right here, we're gonna make a line that comes kind of around his shoulder and go up and over. We're gonna match it on this side, up and over. We're gonna round the ends and then bring it back. All right, so let's try that with our marker. So from over here where his shoulder we're gonna be, would be, we're gonna make a little dot for his shoulder. We're gonna make one on this side to match. Now remember, we're gonna go up first, so just up a little ways, not too far, up. Let's look at that photo. And over, so I'm just gonna make a curved, curved line that goes over. And I'm gonna match it on this side. I like to do one side at a time. So we're gonna go up and over. And then we want to make sure our fins are about the same length. Do so you want to look at it and see if it's about the same length? Sometimes I like to use my fingers to measure. This one's about three of my fingers plus a little bit. This one is about three of my fingers. This one might be a little bit longer. So I'm going to make this one just a little bit longer. Now I'm going to round the end, just a little small curve around the end. You can see there's a little rounded end. And then we're gonna bring it back. I'm gonna bring it back. I'm gonna match it on this side, round it, and bring it back. So if you wanna make them a little wider or chubbier, you can do that. So you can bring them bigger if you want them to be. We're gonna cover all those lines up when we paint. When we're all done, we're gonna give our turtle some back legs. Now the back legs are a little chubbier than the front 
flippers, so, and, but they're much shorter, right? So we're gonna do the two lines for the legs first. We're gonna go over here by his tail. We're gonna make one line. We're gonna put our finger down and make another line right next to it. So see how I put my finger in between? Now your finger might be smaller than mine and that is absolutely okay. So this is gonna be one leg. So I'm gonna make this leg go out, around, and bring it back. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So I'm gonna go a little bit up from the tail, make a dot. I'm gonna lay my finger down and make a dot on the other side. And now I'm gonna make the other leg around and back. When I'm all finished, then I can either color my whole picture in with my marker or I can use my paintbrush. I think I'm gonna be working with my paintbrush today. So I have a pointed paintbrush like this. I have a little fatter pointed paintbrush. So it's up to you which one you wanna work with or what you're the most comfortable with. If you don't have a pointed paintbrush, you can just use your little paintbrush that came with your watercolor set. And what we're gonna do first is put some water into our black paint. Our black might've dried out while we were waiting for our paper to dry outside. So I'm gonna give my black paint a little bit more water. I'm gonna be working with a little bit bigger brush. So I think I'll work with this one. I'm gonna dip my brush in the water and then I'm gonna twirl it in that black paint. And I'm gonna to start to paint my turtle. Now, as I'm painting, I can paint right over the head where I used my Sharpie marker. And as I mentioned earlier, if you're a little nervous about painting your turtle, you don't have to paint it with your paintbrush. You could just color the whole thing in with your Sharpie marker. But I think it's kind of fun to paint. And it's okay if you make a mistake because we're just having fun today. I don't want you to worry about it looking like mine. We're just kind of having fun. So I add a little bit of water to my black paint. If it's too see-through, I just kind of stir it a little bit with my brush to make it a little bit darker. Like this, just kind of tickle my brush in there. And then I'm gonna paint the flippers up in the front. Now, if this is a little hard for you to paint the flippers because they're a little smaller, then grab your Sharpie marker and fill it in with your Sharpie marker, just like how we did the head and the tail. Now, once you're finished doing your beautiful sea turtle, now it's time to paint the plants around the sea turtle. So I took this picture that I found on the internet and I thought it was so neat because you can see all the plants growing around the sides. This is gonna be kind of fun to paint. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our black paint and we're gonna change the side of our painting by making it look a little different. We're gonna make a couple wobbly lines like this. And then I'm gonna do one in the bottom. And I'm gonna do one on this side too. And once I do that, now I'm gonna fill it in. So I'm just gonna take my big paintbrush and fill in that space. Once I have all of my rocks and coral painted black, now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna make some plants like I see in the photo here. So the way that I'm gonna make plants is kind of fun. I'm just gonna be using my paintbrush and doing a couple different things with it. So I'm gonna rinse out my paintbrush. This is a good time to go in and get your little paintbrush that came with your paint set too. This one will work really nice as well. So when you're using your skinnier paintbrush, you're gonna hold it straight up and down. And the first thing we're gonna do is make some plants that are coming up from the bottom. So I'm just dipping my brush in and I'm gonna make a long kind of, this is that long seaweed that grows up from the bottom. And it looks kind of neat when my paintbrush runs out of paint like that because it looks really soft. So that's one way that we can make some plants. 
Let me show you a few other ways that we can make some plants. So if you have a brush that's a little bit chubbier like this one, you can dip your brush in the paint and you can first start by making a long plant that has like two or three leaves on it like this. And then watch this, I'm gonna take my brush and dip it in the paint and I'm gonna set my brush down like this. I'm gonna lay it down and pick it up. I'm gonna flip it over and lay it down and pick it up. I'm gonna get a little bit more paint and then I'm gonna turn my paper and I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So I'm just laying it down. I'm gonna flip my brush over, lay it down. And the reason I'm flipping my brush over is when I push it down on the paper, all the paint runs to the other side of the brush. So that's looking pretty cool, isn't it? So I'm gonna continue this on this plant. Flip, 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 flip. Get a little bit more paint, turn my paper, do it again. And I'm gonna finish this plant. You go ahead and you try it on one of your plants. I'm gonna go over to one of these long grasses and I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna make some skinny lines coming from one of these. And then I'm gonna take my paintbrush and I'm just gonna tap a few little dots around each one of those skinny plants. Now my brush has a lot of black paint in it so it lasts a while because I'm just tapping. I think I'm gonna do that on another one. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna make some skinny lines coming off of this one. And I'm gonna continue some skinny lines on all of these on this side. Now we can leave it looking just like that. So we've got three different kinds of plants that we drew. And now I can just go back and I can repeat what we did before or we can make up something different. So maybe we wanna do this. Maybe we wanna make a swirly plant. I'm just taking my brush and wiggle woggling it up. And it's okay if the plants are in front of the other plants because when you are under the water, the plants are moving, they're shifting depending upon the way the water is moving and the tide is going. Now for my final part, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna make some texture, but I'm gonna be using my black paint again, but this time I'm not gonna be using a paintbrush. I'm gonna add a couple more drops of water to my black paint and stir it around. I'm gonna clean off my brush and I'm gonna get a napkin or a tissue or a paper towel, or even some toilet paper. So I'm gonna get a little bit of my napkin. I'm gonna roll it up into a ball like this. I'm gonna hold the ball with my fingers and I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it into that black paint water very gently. You can see I have some black paint now on the end of my napkin. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of water on my napkin and that's gonna help that black paint to spread. So I've got a little bit of black paint, oops, I'm on my finger too. And what I'm gonna do with this now is I'm gonna lightly tap it around my sides of my painting. So first I'm gonna test it on my paper towel or on my placemat. You see how it's making that neat texture? And now I'm gonna go right up here and I'm gonna to start to tap my napkin around the sides. So 
So I'm going to get a little bit more paint. So I'm going to put my napkin just a tiny bit more water on the tip, a little bit more of that black paint water, test it on my paper towel or on my placemat. I'm going to continue tapping it very softly around the sides of my paper. Well, wasn't this fun today, learning how to draw a beautiful picture of the ocean with our sea turtle? I think he turned out so pretty. I hope you had fun. I would love to see a picture of your artwork. Would you send me a copy of your picture to rtorres at lcusd.net? I hope you had fun and I'll see you for our next lesson. Have a great day.